Let's get right into it. Okay, we'll start with the first speaker, who is uh, an actuary, uh, Mr. James Oluban. I, I let's hope I pronounce that one. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe just a, a brief history of Mr. James Oluban. He's, a, he's been, a, been a fellow of the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries uh, since 1994. Amazing, right? amazing. And uh, he's actually a regular speaker in many uh, insurance and insurance conferences and seminars. Right? I think uh, you'll find that uh, his presentation worthwhile. Uh, he's also an appointed actually to over 20 insurance companies in East and Central Africa. Right? But he's also the chief consultant of, uh, and also the founder of Achison, Achio Services. Uh, it's currently also the group CEO of, of Alexander Forbes right? and uh, has extensive experience in insurance and also investment consultants. Let, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a warm welcome for Mr. James. Without much ado, I'll go into my presentation. Um, I would like to say that, first of all, in Kenya, the mortality tables that actually is used are basically legislated and it's actually in the insurance act. It's not even in the insurance regulations, but it's in the insurance act. If it's in the insurance regulations, it's an easy thing. You sit down with the regulator and the regulator will issue a notice to change it. But if it's in the insurance act for you to change it, you've got to go to parliament. Um, we find that quite strange, but strangely, um, that's the way uh, it's been operating in Kenya. Until 2007, the mortality table that was legislated for a short life was the A194952. Uh, that is basically the uh, English assured life in 1949-52. Now you can imagine you go to a client and then they ask you what is the relevance of this 1949. First of all, they ask you what does this A194952 mean? And then secondly, how relevant is it to us? So you say to them, um, we are using a table for a short life in England and Wales in 1949. <laughs> the next question they will ask you is, are the lives of people in England in 1949 similar to the lives of people in Kenya in the year 2000? And you either keep quiet or you say the answer is yes, but we put some adjustments. And that keeps lingering in people's minds. It's quite difficult to try and explain to them. It doesn't matter how well you try it. to explain to them, you say that, look, you do a number of adjustments. But what is sticking in their minds is that the lives of people in Kenya in 2000 are similar to those in England in 1949. So the Criminal um, Society of Kenya task um, we then asked ourselves how relevant is this mortality table for Kenyan lives and we then started a study, a mortality study and with the, um, with the inclusion of the Association of Kenya Insurers uh, they also said that we should undertake a mobility study as well. Now the, we've undertaken two mortality studies so far. The first one was funded by the World Bank and IFC uh, and it was peer reviewed by actuaries out of Singapore. The second one was funded by the, Achero, by the Association of Kenya Insurers and it was peer reviewed um, for free by the Achero Society of Kenya, the, working, uh, the, the Life Working Party. I'll take you through the two of them, but I'll, um, I'll concentrate on uh, the latest one, the second mortality study, and then show the relevance of it. And perhaps there will be some lessons you can learn from there. And at the last slide, I will put out some comments of what I think uh, may be relevant for the Zimbabwe market. Um, as a profession, uh, it's quite important that we must make sure that we understand the environment within which we operate. And we must find that whatever we are doing must be relevant to ourselves, uh, to the industry in which we operate, and also to the governments in which we operate. Um, he's mentioned bond notes. I've got my own views about bond notes. We can talk about that maybe at the panel discussion and how relevant they will be to us. Um, as a result of that, it's important that uh, in whatever risk products uh, that we get involved in, uh, we need to make sure that we are developing um, the assumptions that are, are used for that. And in Kenya, uh, for insurance products, we basically had a two point mortality study between 2001, the data was 2001 and 2003, and the second one was 2007 uh, to 2010. Um, the Association of Kenya Insurance insisted that we should also carry out a mobility study. 
And an interesting thing is that the insurance companies that underwrite under, like, a medical insurance uh, business for some reason, um, for the two studies, were not actually able to provide the data. And you'll see that um, in a short while um, as we go forward. Now, the study for 2001 2003, we started uh, in 2005 and completed in 2007. You might ask that this quite a long period, but we really struggled with issues around the data and um, explaining to the insurance companies um, why it's important that we go to get the data and why this would be relevant for them. And it took quite a long time to sort out the data. But as soon as the data was sorted, we then got our technical actuarial people to basically do all the rounds and explain that a little later on. And then we got the work peer reviewed and then uh, properly launched in the market. Uh, for both studies, they were undertaken in four different phases. First one was individual assured lives, the second one is group life. Uh, the third one is the mutants, and then the final one uh, is basically sickness rates. And for the uh, second study, the period that was selected by, uh, in the second study, the Association of Kenya Insurers wanted to be central to the production of the second mortality table. So the Association of Kenya Insurers decided that the period to select was 2004 2010. Uh, but when we then started looking at the data, we found out that the 2004 and 5 information was not quite reliable because we were starting uh, the work uh, quite late uh, in 2013. And as a result of that, we agreed with them that we select the period from 2007 to 2010 for the technical assignment. For both studies, the first three phases were completed and the results were released. Uh, phase 4, which is basically the mobility study, has failed twice. Um, now we are asking ourselves as the Kyoto Society of Kenya whether we should still be using the same approach to try and get mobility rates or should we split that and basically specialize and get a small team that will look through that and make sure that that is undertaken uh, on its own without the other ones. As I mentioned earlier, the first study was financed by the World Bank and IFC, the second one by the Association of Kenya Insurers. I emphasize this because if you would like to undertake a mortality study in Zimbabwe, obviously you need a career input. Um, and unless the actuaries are prepared to do it uh, for free, um, it will be quite difficult. So you need to start thinking as to who will fund it. Um, if, um, uh, if, 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 if policyholders pay a levy to, um, the, to IPA, for example, or if uh, insurance companies make contributions to the association of uh, Zimbabwe insurance uh, to an association similar to ours, then maybe one of those two will be a very good party to basically try and fund this, because someone will have to spend their time. If it's a consultant, they'll be leaving their client work to actually come and do this. Uh, if it's an actually uh, an insurance company, there's a specific job that they're employed to do. So you need to think through that. Um, although this um, seems to be simple, but unless you actually get that right, it will be very difficult, because people will then may not necessarily give you um, the, the, the effort and time uh, that is required to complete uh, the study. For the first study, the exposure data where we're getting exposed to risk was basically we collected in force policies as of December 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, and 4. For the second study, again, we took in force policies um, from 2004 to 2010, and as I mentioned earlier, we discarded the 2004 and 2005. For the claims data, uh, we requested for all the claims that were incurred for the first study between two, the, in the years 2000 to 2004 and then the second study from 2004 to 2010. But again, as I mentioned, we discarded the data later on. A critical thing was to observe the principle of correspondence. And although uh, when we were taking the first study, the, the CEOs of the life insurance companies told us that just send us a uh, letter, we provide you the data that you want. We sent out the letter, and everybody came out with their data in very different formats. So we then went back to square one and prepared a template that we then sent to each of these companies. And when you send the template, some companies will say, no, 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 you can't provide it in this, in this format. The format we have is this one. Uh, some companies will say, oh, we need a letter from someone to uh, give the go-ahead to the IT people to actually prepare the data in the format that you want. And what that does is, um, it basically just delays uh, the process of data compilation. Um, it was quite important that we make sure that uh, all companies participate, or as many companies as possible participate. And we were quite pleased that for the mortality study, all companies actually participated. But for the mobility study, less than 10% of the companies participated. And when you go to the Association of Kenya Insurance, again, the big bosses talk very nicely, but when you go down to try and get work done, um, it's a different story. 
Um, just to give an example, for the first study, the exposed to risk, we are basically using the numbers of policies, not the numbers of lives. Um, and I'll talk about that a little later on. That's what we were getting. And the numbers of deaths were there. Um, just a few points to mention here. Most of the data was bunched between age 26 and 45 for males. And hence, you can also see the number of deaths around there. Now, the retirement age in Kenya um, at that time was 60. Now it's, been, uh, it's being uh, done between 60 and 65 when you retire. And you'll see that um, after age 65, there's very little policies um, after that age there, hence very uh, few deaths there. And this is basically for the male uh, males. And you can see that over the period um, that we chose for the first one, the total number of policies of the total exposed risk was basically 200. Uh, 67,000 um, uh, policy years. So that was the data for the males. The data for the females is here. Again, very similar sort of trend. But the interesting thing is that they were, if, if you look here between 36 and 45, uh, that 43 there is very similar to this 43. But look at this between 36 and 35, there was 24% for the males. But when you come to the females, it's actually 33%. So it appears that. Uh, the females during that period were actually starting that there were more females at the younger age that had life insurance policies uh, than the males. But beyond again, age 65, very, very similar um, data there you see. That was for the first study. Now, from here on, I'll concentrate on the second study, which is basically the uh, mortality rates that we've got now, which have been legislated. Uh, for this one, the assignment started in, 2000, in February 2003. And the number of insurance companies that were writing life insurance at that time, individual life insurance of 21, we requested for the data from the 21 companies, all the 21 provided. Because this was now the second time and people have learned their lessons the first time. Group lives, the same, uh, 22, but only 21 provided. One company did not provide. And there were very interesting things that we observed in the group life side of things, which were quite different from the individual life, and I'll discuss those a bit later. For the new terms, only 10 companies were writing a new business, and only the ten, all, all those 10 basically provided us the data. Now, in Kenya, again, because the basis that you use for reserving is legislated in the Act, insurance companies, when they price their new business, price on the basis of the current uh, interest rates in the market. And if the interest rates are like now, uh, you can actually get returns of about 12%. You price your new business at 12%. But as soon as you put it in the books, you come and do an accurate valuation to reserve for it. The insurance act requires that you must value that business at 6%. So when you write the first policy, the first day you write it, the following day you put a valuation strain, you'll be asking your shareholders to put in uh, more capital. Uh, we've struggled with that, and we basically um, are, are almost succeeding. We've gone to the Ministry of Finance uh, through uh, the uh, Insurance Regulatory Authority to explain to them it doesn't make sense, and you'll not be encouraging people to go into this business because all you're doing is that you're tying shareholder capital uh, when people are writing the new business. Hence, only uh, 10 companies, half of the companies are writing a new business. And actually, of the 10, only two write sizable business. Uh, but uh, the budget speech in Kenya was made two days ago. Uh, in the budget, the Ministry of Finance has actually accepted that they are going to change the uh, basis for valuing. Um, in fact, what he said was the basis for valuing all insurance products will actually be changed. And that uh, the um, insurance regulatory authority is working with the Trade Society of Kenya to come up with this uh, particular uh, basis. And what we've now done at the Trade Society of Kenya, we've formed a committee that is working with the um, Insurance Agreement Authority. And the authority has told us, please come up and tell us, um, currently this is the basis you've got, this is what you want to change, and this is the reason why you want to change. Once that is done, then it will actually become quite good. Uh, but structural or systemic things like this are quite bad because they actually affect the way the market uh, progresses. Strangely, for those companies that write medical insurance, we requested all the 10, but only one provided the data. And you can see the similarity again with the 2005. Now, one thing we found out was that the companies that were not um, happy to provide the data was they were worried that if the data is given to these people, how sure are they, some, some of their competitors will actually not know uh, what's going on there. But from, from where I sit, I think that is um, lack of education from the um, insurance companies. Because if you provide the data and then you come out with proper experience analysis, that will actually help you as an insurance company rather than trying to hold back um, what you've got uh, yourself. 
Now, we encounter a lot of hurdles and delays in completing data, and the, 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 the most of the difficulties are basically uh, listed up here. And I'll just pick up uh, one or two of these. Um, in the first study, the most companies were giving us data in tranches. They give you in the first uh, year, then they give you in the second year and the third year. And when the data is provided in tranches, sometimes when you try to collect it together, you find difficulties in basically um, how consistent that um, data is. Another very common um, problem was basically lack of information on the cause of death. Um, and in the first study, we found out that people were quite sensitive. There were very few policies whereby the cause of death is written A, HIV, AIDS. You find pneumonia, something that describes around it. So then in the end, when you're trying to uh, come out in the reductions, it's quite difficult to actually go there. Uh, but having said that, in the 2007 uh, study, that has improved a great deal. And I believe um, if by the time we do the next study, it will actually be quite um, simple there because people will all understand the purposes of why this is being done. Some of the inconsistencies uh, with the data are actually uh, listed here. Uh, there are cases where you find a mature policy still in force. And when you talk to them, they take into the accounts department and they say, you know, yes, this policy is mature, but we're going to leave it in, the, in this particular master file. We know about it, but we put it in the balance sheet as something that we expect to pay. So you say to them, fine, in the financial sense, that's okay for your reporting, but for the exercise that we want to do, we must actually uh, remove that particular um, trade policy. Um, in some cases, the agenda was missing, and when the agenda is missing, um, we then had to get someone who try and read the names. Is James a male or female? <laughs> and in one of the tribes in Kenya, the Kikuyu tribe, which is the biggest tribe in Kenya, um, actually males and females, sometimes the names are interchangeable. So it's quite difficult to try and guess that. So you've got to go back and ask them, please give us that. Now that's supposed to be a very simple thing. And if you're in an insurance company, clearly somebody in the policy proposal form must say whether they are male or female. But for some of these, when you even go to the proposal file, you actually don't find um, the gender. So you wonder how do these people actually underwrite this policy? Uh, you'll be told, ah, no, 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 you know, you've got our standards. Uh, then we need uh, each, 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 each salesperson must give us three proposals a day. Of uh, these three proposals, we must make sure that we process them within X number of days and they must have a certain success rate to come through. So, because of pressures like that, uh, whereby the, at that stage uh, the issue is not to make sure that the data is as clean as possible, but it's, it, it, it's to make sure that you get the result you want, you end up in situations where even gender uh, is missing. Um, so, for both of them, we had concerns about the quality and consistency, but we sorted those out as we went along. But the main objective that we had was to try and use as much of the information as possible. As a result of that, we then had to use approximations uh, in some cases where the duplicate policies remove the ones that are duplicate, where the age um, at issue um, is provided, um, then you use that to estimate the date of birth. Because we're using the date of birth rather than the age. Because when they give you the age at issue, maybe age next birthday, age last birthday, age nearest birthday, or the way people will interpret um, the things that, um, in, in the policy. Um, now, for the, for the latest study, the second study, um, the data that we discarded for ordinary lives was very small, 5%, which is acceptable, but for group lives, it was actually 46%. And we really agonized to discard a very large proportion of data like this. For a new time, we discarded a very small proportion. Now, the thing we found out about group lives uh, is that apparently the way group life insurance is done in Kenya, it's a market that is driven by brokers. So, the, unfortunately, Alexander was also an insurance broker. Um, when I wear my hat as a broker, I think very differently from the time when I wear my hat as an actuary. The brokers, uh, I hope they're not brokers in here. I always say that brokers are full of themselves. <laughs> the brokers usually go out there. They believe they own the client. Although they are not taking any risk, but the broker actually believes they own the client. So they go to company A and ask them to give you a quotation. They go to company B and give you a quotation. And they keep churning the business. And every time they get a quotation, they like the quotation to be as low as possible because they want to uh, please the client. But the broker forgets that, yes, you're reducing the rate, the rate down, but your own remuneration is uh, dependent on that particular premium. So it really doesn't actually make sense. Now, for some reason, um, again, to give you an example in Kenya, the insurance companies are scared stiff of two insurance brokers, M and Alexander Fox. They don't, just don't want to close the lines of those guys because those guys are the ones who feed them. So you find 
that the underwriting will look like business, they try and cut shortcuts. Um, most of the times, uh, they just give a unit rate. So whether you are the one who give cover for um, a company in a construction site where most of the construction workers are age 28, or they're giving cover uh, to a group where, um, an industrial group of very old people, um, they basically just depend um, on the rate uh, that the brokers give. And to be honest with you, I have seen brokers who basically give, they go back to the client and say the rate that the insurance company has given me is this, but it's just someone in their head giving the number, they procure the business, then go and force it down the throat uh, of the insurance company. I hope that kind of behavior is not in this country. Now, looking at the data for the second study, um, the total number of initial exposed risk for MES was 714,000 uh, policies or year, or policy years, the MES 482, so 1.2 million. Uh, you can see in the previous one, the total number was quite low, so in this one we have about 1.2 million policies in the market, and the number of deaths are listed there, and this is the important one. Uh, basically, this is the one that the underwriter has quite tried to look at it. Basically, crude uh, debt rate. Uh, the, the male is 2.4 per thousand, females 1.7, an average of 2.1. That's okay, it's going in the right direction. Um, and there is the actual data. Again, you see uh, for females uh, between age 30 and 49, and for, for males, the same there. Um, coming here for the group lives, um, 549,000. Um, uh, basically individual lives uh, within those groups and the deaths, the number of deaths are there. Again, you can see the average death rates there. Now, if you combine them, you get an average rate of 7.3 per million, but uh, strangely enough, most of the insurance companies at this time in the market were basically charging 4.8 per million. So every time you write a policy, from a mortality perspective, you're basically losing. So what, are they, what, what most of the insurance companies have been trying to do, again, it goes to relevance and innovation and thinking. Uh, the clever ones know that by the time you rate the business as 4.8 or 5 per million, when the actual rate is 7.3, then you must use other means to make sure that you can make a profit out of that business. Automatically, you make an underwriting loss, so people run to make sure that the expenses are quite low, uh, to make sure they invest the money to, 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 high, to get as high a return as possible, or dodge tax to make sure that the return is very good. Uh, which is not really a good way to run an insurance company, but um, such is life. Now, the only good thing is that the insurance regulatory authority, uh, after we finalized the last premium rates, have now legislated minimum group life rates for males and females. So any insurance company that underwrites below that minimum rate, and you must submit your returns once every quarter to the regulator uh, electronically, you will actually be penalized. And the penalty is two times the premium that you collected. Um, the data is there again, but in the same uh, area. For annuitants, um, only 10,000 uh, lives, and the number of deaths are very few. But look at this, this is actually quite strange. Uh, we really struggle with this, whereby the male mortality is actually lower than the female mortality. Uh, very strange. I personally think that maybe there's a problem with the data, and hopefully uh, when we do the next study, uh, this may actually come out. Again, there you are, more males actually than females. In terms of the methodology we used, basically we calculated first uh, crude mortality, crude uh, mortality rates, number of deaths, uh, 8x divided by initial exposed risk at 8x. Um, we were basically using the principle of correspondence whereby you include the life as part of the exposed risk at 8x, even only if were well, that life to die immediately, then it would be counted as having uh, got 8x. And the age level was the age nearest birthday, we used the census approach, and the period which was selected, as I mentioned earlier, was basically 2007-2009. Now, this was basically done in a computerized system. Uh, the model was built uh, by a team of people, a team of young, trainer people, and not old ones um, like myself. Now, once these had been done on an age-by-age age basis, uh, we, they were then graduated, uh, basically watching um, smoothness and goodness of fit, um, and we are watching to avoid over or under graduation uh, of this. Now, the important thing to mention again is that in the second study, because the sponsors were the session of Kenya insurers, uh, they insisted that the actuarial society must sign with them that from the beginning, once the data is collected and you remove the company names and you combine all the data together, all the models that we built up, all the calculations belong to them. 
Again, there was quite a lot of argument as to who uh, that will belong to, but in the end, we basically handed all of it to uh, the, 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 the Association of Kenya uh, insurers. We then compared the graduated rates with the uh, standard published tables and uh, the, the technical things that we used were actually here for. We did it on group life skills, spine fit uh, was used to graduate, and their interpolations were a little small. Uh, for annuities, a model was built up, a relational model was built up there, and they are graduated according to the A90 series of tables. And this was important because the amount of data was actually uh, small. Uh, coming to the results of the individual lives from age 0 to 100, that's where, that's how the, the actual data was. We then sliced this between 20 year ages to, to study a little bit more. Um, because when you slice it, for example, between age 20 and 40, these numbers here will be all over the place here for you to be able to see it properly. Now, between age 15 and 60, these were the actual observed rates, these orange ones, and the red um, graph there is the graduated mortality rates. Again, as smooth as possible and as near to all the dots as possible. Between age 60 and 100, basically, because once you fit this curve here, uh, you can't then change it down there. You put all um, the curve is fitted so that it goes all the way and it's going up there. Now, up there is what you're seeing coming up here. And very few um, actual um, crude mortality rates down there. Uh, the end result was this. The red one is the one that the, the, of the second mortality study. The green one was the first Kenyan mortality study. There you are there, going there. So there was actually an improvement in mortality over that period. And then the SA8590 light is this I don't know this color, I think it's purple, but that color there. <laughs> again, um, and, and, and an important thing again, the, the sort of general, um, the general shape of the curves is similar. Uh, the one that we are quite keen to look is to compare the mortality, the mortality rates before and after, but there was something that was happening between age, uh, just under age 25 and to age uh, 36 for the uh, Kenyan tables. For the females, again, a similar approach we used, and there is the table there, there you go. And again, comparing the, trip, the latest, the second study is the red table there, and the first study is the green one. And look at this, it's complete opposite from the male's one, whereby it appears as though the mortality rates for the females has actually uh, worsened uh, over that period. Now the main reason for that was that this green one, which was the previous table, there was very little data that was useful for females, so we used the male's table to arrive at the female rates for the first study. So, strictly speaking, this green one is like when you look about look at, look at it uh, in retrospect, it was actually not quite accurate um, because this is based on actual data. This was based on the male's data to drive that. And again, the SA table is basically up there, but a little uh, strange up there. Um, then an interesting one is this one, which we spent uh, in the general society quite a lot of time to debate. Uh, we don't actually have the answers, very strange. The graduated male rates are these red ones here. The graduated female rates are these green ones here. So it says that before age 22, uh, the female mortality is worse than the male mortality. Then after age I think about age 50 there, then the female mortality is again worse than the male mortality. Uh, we would have expected that the female cap, the green one, should have been below the red one throughout, but this is actually what the data produced um, after um, our work. Now, if you then look at it, um, the only luck that the companies had is that most of the policies they were writing were between age 30 and age 45, whereby the mortality tables there are behaving in a, in, in a rational manner. If you are then an insurance company and you are writing a lot of business around this age here and around this age here, you need to think and say, um, from an underwriting perspective, am I making underwriting profits or underwriting losses? And if so, what do I need to do to my book of business to make sure that overall is actually profitable? But again, there were a big difference of opinion. Uh, we went back, particularly during the peer review by the general, the general society of Kenya uh, Life Insurance Working Party, there was even debate as to whether we should change. Uh, the graduation of this one, and if you move this up somewhere here and lower this down, there will be a problem because every time you do it, you're going to repeat it iteratively, and all the seven tests must all work. And when we try to force it to go the right way, and they wouldn't actually work. So, this is still uh, some debate that is uh, being undertaken there. 
For the group wire rates, those are the good rates. The graduate rates come out there quite nicely. Uh, this is for female crude, and again, uh, coming out quite nicely. And then comparing these two, and these ones are coming more or less quite nicely, what we were expecting, whereby you find most of the male rates are actually um, higher than the uh, female ones. Um, and this is the comparison between uh, two, the, the second study, um, the first study, the essay table, and there was a study that had been done by Hanover Re, also in Kenya. And again, that's for females. Um, the critical thing about uh, these tables is that now we are very confident uh, on the mortality rates um, for, the, for the short lives um, uh, in the country. Um, as a result of that, um, IRA is actually not quite comfortable that these are the, premium, these are the uh, mortality rates that you must use. And for group lives, they have come up with um, sort of minimum rates. Now for annuitants, males, those are the, the crude rates. That's the, um, basically the graduated table. Females the same. And then you come again and compare them here. Again, behaving quite nicely, whereby the males die faster um, than the, the, the females. Again, here comparison between the, the, the latest table, the previous one, and then the A90. Um, we then had to think about what is the impact of AIDS. Um, and there's quite a lot of debate around here because the actual cause of death is not listed. Uh, it was quite difficult for us to actually decipher uh, whether these are AIDS related deaths or not. The actual society is now sitting down to basically work with the insurance companies to make sure that the cause of death is actually listed down. Uh, finally, in terms of the conclusions for our industry and some lessons for you, um, we basically are saying to the insurance company that we need to focus on the quality of the data that we've got. The cost of death must basically be written down and uh, carefully uh, monitored. Uh, we must now turn to individual number of lives rather than the number of policies because when you're using the number of policies, you then must manually go through the data and remove duplicate policies. For group life data, there may still be problems because a large proportion of the data uh, was discarded. Now, for medical insurance business, um, we believe this is actually a failure, and specific attention needs to be basically put into this in order to come up with anything that is basically reasonable. Uh, some of the key challenges were around the data, competition and reluctance of insurance companies to release the data because they are very worried about that, and then quite inadequate actual skills in various uh, companies. But again, we are, we are happy that regulator because they are forced that every insurance company must have an actuarial department and must have um, an actuarial person with a certain minimum uh, standard, which is actually helping quite a lot. Um, I can tell you, you require the support of all the stakeholders if you're going to, to be able to conclude this exercise properly. The insurance companies and the regulator are quite useful there. Uh, for yourselves, um, the lessons that I can tell you uh, from our own experience in making sure that whatever we're doing was quite relevant. Please focus on the process from the beginning to the end. Um, it's not a simple process. You need to be um, quite careful about it. Let it be uh, dealt with by the relevant uh, working party of your association. And you need to be quite aggressive. Um, if, you, if you expect that the, 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 the managing director of the company tells you to get the data and you get it, you'll actually be surprised when you try uh, to go around to it. Now, in this country, you've got the Z92 table. You need to think, is that relevant? How was it done? Was it already documented? Are those rates actually correct? And whatever you come up with, how do they compare with that? Now, you need to think about the issues around funding who will fund for it. Um, then the whole industry stakeholders need to buy in themselves as an association, the uh, insurance companies, and basically IP. Uh, the data we talked about, and then you need to get a good team to basically do peer review. Um, you may the actuarial side of Kenya will actually be quite happy to peer review this for you. We've got some nice young actuaries who are qualified recently, who are quite hungry um, to crunch numbers. <laughs> and then finally, you just basically need to continuously monitor. We all keep talking about the actuarial control cycle. You need to do the work, look at it, monitor, and go back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Interesting findings, findings in Kenya. I think we'll take questions from now. Thank you. Tawana from Old Visual. I have three simple questions. Um, number one, um, 
are you continuing to collect data? So you did this over this period, and then you had an, an issue to do with uh, data collection and templates. So have you asked the life companies to continue collecting that data um, for your next investigation? And then, secondly, do you have a view on, because I was quite interested by your GLA um, rates and the rates that companies are charging. Um, do you have a view on what the conversion rate is from GLAs to annuities? So do, you, do those people offering GLAs actually end up selling annuities so that maybe they end up making money that way in terms of delay profits? Um, and then number three, I, I know you're talking about um, your annuity rates being um, legislated, um, but now that the Minister of Finance has, has said you can essentially end up doing what you want, um, would you actually be brave enough to use the annuity rates where females have got heavier mortality than men? <laughs> okay, let me take those three. Um, yes, in terms of the data, we are actually pleased to tell you that we've convinced the insurance companies that it must be done continuously. And we, what we did was we had to send four people from the Actuarial Society of Kenya, myself and three others, to visit each of the 20 companies to talk to them and show them the relevance of it. And what we've agreed is that every quarter there is a portal uh, where all the insurance companies submit their data and that data is basically then tabulated by someone uh, from the Actuarial Society of Kenya. And then we compare that against the data that the insurance companies submit to the regulator so as to make sure there is no more cheating. So the quality of the data for the next time is actually quite good. Um, they, and the companies are now understanding why this is important. So now every quarter they basically give us, we, we, what we did was we brought up like what I would call a master file. And every quarter they give you the policies that have come off and the new policies that have come in. And then they also give you the debt and the cost of debt. Now someone basically has to look at that throat. Unfortunately, again it goes back to funding. We only have uh, in our office, the Cairo Society of Kenya office, we only have uh, three members of staff who are also doing the actual exams. And one of those people is actually the one that takes care of that um, IT part. So the answer is yes, it's been done uh, continuously. In terms of the conversion rates uh, to the annuities, uh, only one company, um, insurance company in West Africa, actually thinks a clever way like that to look from the beginning to the end to make sure that if they don't make their profit here, they make it um, somewhere else. The others, to be honest, are basically using a scattergun approach. Basically, should. Uh, if it comes to let it come. <laughs> the, in terms of the, um, the annuities, um, no, we are not brave enough to use um, um, the reverse. But just to tell you what the two big annuity writers have done, um, what they did is one, one of the big ones, what they actually did was they basically got a big block of money, invested it in 20 year government bonds whereby they blocked, I think the rate they got, uh, the coupon thing was, the coupon rate was I think something like 12, but they actually, you look at the actual yield, is actually um, quite high because of the way the thing is uh, trading. Once they had a block of government bonds that are going to earn a particular rate, they then quote every time below that particular rate. And when we, so, when they then come to uh, do their reserving, they then look and say this particular, so every time they, they, they block that, uh, um, uh, that asset, so every time they're collecting 100 million, you basically get the 100 million in and you then allocate 100 million of what you've already blocked in there. So it's a way of basically making your profit from investments upfront. You already have identified your asset, now you're basically getting in there. Every time you're rating below that return that you're going to get, you basically make money from there. And for those two guys, they're actually quite smart uh, with what they have done. Uh, but the rest, as I mentioned, again, are still all over the place. But we couldn't actually use uh, the rates, the, 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 the new rates uh, in the reverse. <coughs> yes, that was. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. I just did some observation, yes, question. First of all, the exposed to this looks quite a lot to me. The number of flights that came into the study, just about 1.2 million. What is the population of insured lives in Kenya in, in relation to the total population in order to create a credible estimate of the mortality? Secondly, I understand that uh, the significant development of micro insurance in the Kenyan market. 
to what extent are these investigations inclusive of the micro insurance sector? And if, if, if so, how is the data collected uh, in, those, in, in those circumstances? And finally, generally speaking, we tend to, would be more interested in the, first of all, the comparison A1949-52, which was, which you mentioned when you started, how does it compare with the new findings? And also, the exposed to this in terms of the amount paid. It defined the hotel to this in that manner. Okay, uh, uh, thanks, Douglas. The first one there, yes, the 1.2 um, exposed risk is actually quite low. But in Kenya, the penetration of insurance is actually very, very low. Um, the proportion of the, the insured people in the general population is only about 2%. Uh, the penetration is quite low. And uh, as a general society, when we are carrying out this second study, we've actually compared the mortality of insured lives against the general mortality in the country. Um, the Central Bureau of Statistics undertakes um, uh, census studies once every 10 years. And we've actually looked at the mortality um, uh, lives of the general population using the Central Bureau of Statistics numbers against the insured ones. And uh, the, 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 the mortality rates are completely uh, different. Uh, when you compare the insured, the select insured people and get those. Um, having said that, um, the insurance companies are quite uh, cognizant of the fact that now they need as much data as possible to get the credibility better. Um, and uh, it's agreed that we basically are taking baby steps. Hopefully during the third study, we should be able to get almost every insured life in the country because as a fellow society, we've also taken an active uh, role to make sure we're actually recording all the policies that are actually uh, coming in. A uh, second one is a very good one. Again, we debated in the actual society quite greatly. Uh, micro insurance in Kenya is becoming a big, big thing now. Uh, not only on life insurance, but also on general insurance, on healthcare, and all that. Now, we've got a working uh, party um, with the, 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 the actual society of Kenya that looks at micro insurance. And what we found out was that micro insurance is a strange kind of business. Uh, it's not sold on those niceties there. You actually go into the, uh, just to give you an example, the, um, the guys who, who make pants and things like those, we call them juakali. You go there, you find the thousands of people knocking things down, making cooking pans, uh, making things that uh, people use in the construction industry. Those people are in small, small groups. And the way the most successful micro insurer called uh, CIC insurance does is, they go to those people and sit with their leaders and tell them, we want to give you health insurance, we want to give you life insurance, we want you to save for your retirement. How much can you actually afford to give us? So it's basically done on an affordability uh, level rather than our usual um, underwriting uh, standards. Um, two that are very successful, they have um, a, pension, a pension fund, an umbrella one, they call BAO. BAO means, uh, in Swahili, is means something like 20 bob, 20 shillings. So you are allowed to join as long as every month you contribute a minimum of 20 bob. Um, then that thing builds up. They also have um, another, what I would almost call almost a self-insured thing, whereby they all contribute together to provide like a funeral cover and death cover, and then CAC basically insures, insures it. So in direct answer to your question, what we've done is that in those numbers, we don't even have one micro-insurance policy there. Because it's a very, uh, but anyway, the insurance people here will say differently. For me, it's a very strange kind of business. I would actually, if I was running an insurance company, I'd actually be quite scared to go there because it's done in very strange principles. Um, having said that, uh, government is pushing it quite hard and it's actually where to go because that's where most people are. I can actually see maybe in a few years the number of policies in my insurance will be many times more than the nice, juicy actual ones there. So, I think for the people who will come after me, the Federal Society of Kenya, we really need to think. And as a federal profession, we need to basically lead in that and say what we need to do to be able to actually monitor the experience rates for the micro insurance very carefully. Uh, yes, a comparison with A194952 is there. Um, I actually have it in some slides, but for the previous ones, I can share that with you uh, maybe later on. And when we compare with that, we actually found out that the 
mortality of AM1949-52 was heavier than what we are actually experiencing. So what the companies were complaining about was actually light, it was actually heavier. So it was a good thing that we went there. Thank you, James. I, I find that um, very interesting. I have a few questions uh, coming from the South African context. One of the issues that we've had in our own mortality investigation is the issue of confidentiality. That the insurers were becoming reticent to provide the data on the concern that because the analysis was being done by volunteers, that their data was getting into the hands of competitors. And how have you dealt with that? And then looking at the results, there are a couple of things that I would be very interested to, to get your views on what might be driving them. But firstly, the the lack of the, the that you had to get rid of 46% of the group life data. What was the reason for that? And could you have done approximations to see whether the rejected data gave you results that were at least consistent with the retained data in some sort of broad context? And then um, why that group life data is so much higher than individual life data? Is there uh, something like, for example, a policyholder might lapse their policy uh, because they're ill and need the money, and therefore the debt gets out of your mix? So you're, um, you're not really comparing the true um, underlying mortality. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yeah, true confidentiality is a real big, uh, big problem. And the president of the Association of Insurance uh, Companies here in Zimbabwe will actually tell you that. Um, strangely enough, yes, they're all operating the same market, but guys basically just fight on the, 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 the corner of the road and they're quite worried about how their data goes. And to make matters worse for us, some of, for example, the chairman of the Life Working Party is actually the chief actuary of one of the most successful insurance companies. So the guys are very scared to, to give their data there. So what we've done is that we've tried to explain to them, guys, from a professional perspective, it's actually wrong for us to provide the data to someone else. And if we, if, if we provide it to that person, it will not take too long for you to know. And once you know, you will not trust us. So basically, one of the things is to try and plead with them and say, guys, please trust us. Now, it will take, I believe it will take quite a long time to build up that um, um, uh, confidence. Um, in the fact that the data will not be shared with somebody else. And so far, the truth of the matter is that we have not actually shared uh, information from one company uh, to another. But also, I think the thing that is helping a little bit is that the information is being taken to our secretary, which has uh, three people, and one particular person, and that person is basically uh, being told to make sure that they handle it uh, very confidentially. Um, your other comments on the group life data? Yes, um, a large proportion of the data was actually uh, discarded and we spent a lot of time trying to understand whether we should include this data or not. And the main reason why we are discarding this data was you find when you try you take exposed to this data here, then you try and look at the deaths. When you try and compare them you don't actually you find deaths here but you don't find those people in the exposed to risk. So it doesn't matter how well you try to do it, uh, you basically come back to that. Uh, but one of our young actuaries actually tried to do something and say, look, um, if we had tried to put these people back, uh, what would the numbers look like? Um, unfortunately, they were, they were not actually coming up with anything, so we just decided to make the decision that let's leave it out, and hopefully um, in, in, in the future we'll basically be able to get much more data. And the final one, you're right, is because the individual people actually love some their policies. But again, having said that, we are still looking to see the differences between the, the group life uh, mortality rates and the individual life mortality rates to see what other reasons could have caused uh, the, 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 the big differences uh, between those. And for me, I think the good thing is that because the profession and the industry are actually actively engaging, um, hopefully in another few years we'll actually get much more uh, credible uh, statistics going forward. Thank you very much, James. Uh, 